So let's talk about bulk conveying systems for the plastics industry. So everything that we've talked about so far, uh, how the industry is standardized on vacuum, and, and yes, there is pressure conveying systems, but you typically won't see them in, 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 a, in a resin, con uh, resin producing uh, manufacturing plants, typically because we've talked really what's going on inside of the plant. Now, uh, with, with, resin, uh, with resin prices being the way they are, uh, many customers of ours like to purchase in bulk. So what does that mean for our, uh, for our customers that like to buy their, their resin in bulk? Uh, you can buy resin in, uh, by the truckload. That's typically going to be about 40,000 pounds a shot. Uh, or you can buy it by rail car if your plant is logistically located near a rail line or close enough where they, you can have one installed. Um, in this case, that's, that's, it's going to be over 200,000 200, pounds uh, per every rail car. So we have to find a way of getting that resin out of that bulk transportation and into bulk storage. And that's typically going to be a silo, for example. So if you're, if you're having your, uh, your resin brought in on trucks, um, Conair has come up with a, a, a truck fill proofing system with barcode capability. And the reason that we're launching this here at the, at the Conair Summit is because our, uh, a lot of our customers have come to us and said, hey, you know, I, we filled the wrong silo. It was a mistake. You know, I, we, we handed the key to, to one guy and it turned into a phone game where they handed it to the next operator who handed it to the truck driver and they opened the wrong lock somehow or, 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 or the wrong silo was filled. Um, this happens uh, all too often, and that is a very costly mistake because if you mix resin, now you can't use that anymore. Or if you layer certain lots on top of each other uh, of the same resin, you may not have been able to plan for that properly. Or at the end of the day, you now have to drain that silo out, and that's going to cause downtime in your plant. So Conair noticed this. We understood that, uh, what our customers were looking for, and we, we developed this truck fill barcoding system to be able to truly automate the process where uh, the bill of lading now is going to come in with a barcode, and that barcode is going to be um, is going to hold information such as material type, lot uh, information, as well as a Julian date that's going to ensure that, uh, based on a setting in our control, you can make sure that that, that lock is only going to open up within a certain time frame of when that barcode was generated. This will ensure that your your operators aren't holding on to. Um, a bill of ladings from two months ago to still open up that lock. We're going to make sure that it's always going to be utilizing that bill of lading that comes with the truck um, to ensure true proofing. Um, this is a really innovative control that we're very happy to be launching here at the summit. For our customers that bring resin in uh, by rail car, uh, we have um, something called rail car unloading systems that we can apply to a certain application. Before we get started, I'd like to announce that IPEG has acquired Phoenix Systems Corporation uh, just late, late, late last year, right around the end of December. This is extremely exciting for Con Air, uh, being one of IPEG's companies, because uh, we're now able to utilize this technology and implement it now into a full, full uh, product line for Con Air offerings. And it, it expands our capabilities, not only with the rail car and loading space, but when I start to get into how we put these systems together from an engineering perspective, we can now implement some of, this other, some of these other equipment to expand our capabilities in the plant, greater throughputs, longer conveying distances, and greater capabilities for Con Air's offerings for our customers. Now, there's two different types of rail car and loading systems to talk about. Uh, a single pump, single motor system and a dual pump, dual motor system. What I've just put up on the screen here is a single pump, single motor system where this, this, uh, this pump is generating vacuum for the vacuum side of the system to pull the resin out of the, out of the rail cars, conveys it over to what we call a vacuum to pressure transition assembly. Uh, which consists of a cyclone and airlock assembly because we're, we're converting that, uh, that, that, uh, that pressure from a negative pressure to a po positive pressure system. And then the positive side of that pump is going to pressure convey this material up from that location up into the silos or multiple silos based on the application. Now, these types of systems are, are, are economical. Uh, they can be sized for, for certain applications, but they are limited. You are limited to, to your vacuum and your, your pressure side variables here because that pump is only one pump. You, you, you only have the, the CFM being generated on the vacuum side has to equal it on the pressure side. And there's no way of getting around that because you only have one pump frame. But in most applications, these types of systems fit uh, to be able to unload rail cars at medium type uh, conveying rates. Now, the most versatile and flexible type of rail car and loading systems would be what we call a dual pump, dual motor system, where uh, if you look on the image I just brought up on the screen, we isolate the vacuum system from the pressure system. Now, they are connected because we, we still are doing that vacuum to pressure transition assembly with a cyclone 
uh, to bring the material in, it gravity feeds down into a uh, into an airlock, and that airlock's going to meter that material onto the pressure side. But the vacuum pump can be independently sized and designed from the pressure side. And this is truly flexible because if you have uh, a full line of rail cars and your furthest car is 500 feet, we can size the vacuum system for that. Where if your pressure side may only be 100 feet or maybe 800 feet with nine elbows, we can size the pressure side for that as well. It's all completely flexible where each of these systems are independent of each other. Now, the other item to, to, to talk about with systems like this is they can be broken up. So even though uh, the, I started this with rail car and loading, but now what happens if you have a surge bin and you'd like to, if you're generating a lot of, a lot of regrind, you have a central regrind collection system, uh, pulling all your regrind off the floor into a central um, uh, surge bin, and you'd like to blow that now out of your plant up into a silo. We now can take the pressure side of this equipment from our Phoenix Systems acquisition, and we can now apply that pressure system and blow that material up now into that silo, all within the Conair family of equipment. Uh, it's truly exciting for us to be able to have this technology now.